just, uh, just going back to uh, really the, the, the approach here in terms of the transformation project, um, the, um, the figures for the spend on consultants will be you know, readily available so we, we, we can share, share those numbers. What, uh, what I'd like to do though is just say a few words about you know, why, why we're using expertise like that. So very importantly, um, there is something for me around um, we do have expertise in the council from an officer point of view on certain things, but it is fair to say that on certain things um, we really do value and need an external perspective in my view. We have got the expertise that we've got are experts in their field. Some of the work that they're doing around the social value modelling and analysis is work which to be fair um, as a concept it's been around for quite a while but in terms of people doing it and consultants and local authorities getting into this kind of scientific approach uh, some of it's pretty uh, pretty cutting edge stuff actually uh, I think it's fair to say um, and also one of the things that we're finding from talking to um, Jim Clifford who the lead for BWB from the review is actually we start to get an insight into some of the models that have been rolled out very successfully and some of the real benefits from some really innovative models across the UK which in fairness, you know, people like him in, in his role, he has the ability to bring some of that best practice and ideas and expertise forward which, if we're being really honest, within the, the permanent officer, uh, you know, partner within the council, uh, you know, we, we don't uh, necessarily have some So, sorry, Chair, I've just realised I think the second part of the question was just around the, it was the engagement of the Defence Group, wasn't it? So, so just in terms of the stage that we're at at the moment, um, the, where BWB are at at the moment, so, so they have only just started in, in recent weeks, so they are very much in what they call the, the, the information intelligence gathering phase at the moment, so we're, we're providing and sharing lots of information with them. One of the things they talk about is this concept of understanding the story of the user uh, and, and, the, and the people that are using our facilities. Why are people going to a leisure centre? What are they using it for? And things like that. So, so they have been at this stage doing some targeted engagement with really with you know, some of the staff and people involved in these services to actually get that user story, which is really, really important for them. But, but, it's, but absolutely very clearly, as part of a structured process, you know, which we now know over the next few months, um, there will be certainly engagement to get an understanding from a variety of parties as to what these services are about, what are the key issues for them. And then obviously later on in the project, as appropriate, we then obviously move into formal consultation phases with staff and the trade unions, etc., as appropriate if, you know, depending if there are any changes to be recommended uh, coming out of this. First of all, 
wonderful um, historic, this historic review or this piece of work a year ago um, is not something that I have knowledge of, obviously, before I moved into this role. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy to put some historic information that way to actually look to provide that. The presentation I've outlined to you tonight is where we we're at as a president and, and my understanding of where we're going as a council now. I can't, I can't comment on anything that's happened in the past. Secondly, uh, apologies if I didn't explain it particularly clearly, the engagement that's taking place this week, and it is important, is to understand that user story. So that's why we're meeting with people at the moment. It's important because there's a difference. So we've talked to the trade unions and they've made the valid points. Uh, so we're meeting with them on a regular basis. We obviously need to be clear with people why we are engaging with them and what the context is. So in fairness to the staff and the people, it's being clear with them that we are talking to you now, we just want to understand the business and the service. What is the user story? What is that about? That's what those workshops are about this week. Um, it is not about uh, you know, options for change and what would absolutely require full consultation with staff at a later date. So, We've, we've explained the reasoning behind the workshops to the trade unions and it is being made clear to the staff that come along to those sessions that that is essentially what it's about. BWB are trying to understand and build up that detailed knowledge <coughs> of the people that are using uh, these facilities. And just as a final point, and it's a really good example, so you made a reference here as to some of the links between leisure and other issues around health and some of those outcomes as well. So some of this is actually quite sophisticated and complex, but actually some of the work that BWB are doing is using their expertise to look at some of those broader outcomes. How can you measure some of those outcomes and how do you link them back to some of the things that we do as a council and some of the facilities that we have, whether it be a leisure centre or whether it be a library, so a really, really good example is you can argue benefit from a leisure centre, um, not just by, well, in the traditional way of people coming in to use it to get fitness, but actually in some areas and case studies we've looked at, it's linked to social prescribing by GPs, and we can actually tread all this back and demonstrate that the a leisure provision is delivering um, a health outcome and actually, you know, improving, improving, you know, some of those, uh, uh, you know, outcomes and benefits on that side as well. But you know, sometimes we're actually saving the health service money as well. So, so this work should should get into uh, those kind of concepts. Uh, and as I say, that's the reason why actually we have needed some external expertise and help with some of this. Okay. Yeah, just wanted to mention that um, I'm quite excited when I read some of this, and I'll tell you the reason why. The mainly on the leisure and tourism side, I've long had a problem with the way rulers have its tourism yeah. and leisure, or the lack of. Uh, it's what been wonderful. And what really pointed it out to me was I hosted the Three Queens as the mayor, and that 
How can we create all those jobs at both? But Liverpool and the other five councils have been so successful doing it. And I think we're on that right track. So I just wanted to point that out that whilst I have, you know, we do have to look at the pennies, we do have to look at, at consultation pennies, and sometimes they can be spent unwisely. I think in this particular year, So I thank you for certain those points around the you know the links with the tourism side. The way some of this interesting is played out in practice, we had a very similar conversation to some of this at the at this reform culture steering group meeting that we had a few weeks ago with various new parties around the table uh, from uh, you know some of them from the Liverpool side of the water who are actually coming forward with some great events, great ideas about events that can be organised and things like that. Um, so I think some of it is being driven by that. We need to link it into the work that we're doing around tourism as well, and link it in with the business and the growth side of things. So I've got a, a colleague, Alan Evans, who's my counterpart, who's the Commissioner for Growth, and he's picking up some of those bits. So I think we need to make sure we capture that, and also, um, you know, as appropriate, capture some of this as part of the uh, as part of the, the leisure review, in particular. The, Aspect of those those facilities we talked about, the, you know, the floor and the fire and the so presenting. Um, Chris, just I noticed that um, a week ago, was it was, that the Hamilton Square there was some sort of trash piling, something going on, um, which I was told by one of our employees who was there that it was to. arms opening and various sort of things. And I just wondered how successful that has been because it seemed to me if we're looking to do the big thing and that's what we really need to do to draw people in. Like we all go uh, uh, I think now on my own mind goes to Christmas events all over the place but there aren't any in real. Um, it looked to me to be a little small
councils go you know, to a fair event, business, business event. But I think, to be fair, we have to be honest with ourselves and, uh, and everyone on this committee, if we can work together. Most people have seen what, what, what to be fair to is the graph of doom, and most councils, particularly Northern councils, face the graph of doom, where the resources that we currently have at our disposal will be swamped by those services that are statutory. So those, those are within education and people with disability and adult social services and so on. And that will be, the, the, that will be swamped more than the money that we're getting in. So we've got to be so imaginative that, and because not all of these services that we spoke about tonight are considered to be a statutory service of the local authority. That is a, that's a fact. They've always been underfunded through the rate support grant, the RSG, because we always overspent what the allocation for those services was within the RSG. We're not getting any more on RSG, that's gone, that's going. So most people are looking at the graph of doom by 2020, that every single penny within the council will be, will, could be dedicated to, to um, those statutory services. So we really have got to think differently. And, you know, the, the, the point about consultants is we haven't been able to think differently. Our history tells us we haven't been able to think dramatically differently. So hence, bring some, I'm always a fresh pair of eyes looking at, at, at any issue. So, so that, that, I think that hopefully Adam, you know, answers some of the questions that we need to think differently. We need to be very imaginative. And, and you know, the prospect of being able to deliver anything that we're delivering now better with even, even, even less money is a challenging one. And that, why sort of, starts the story but doesn't, doesn't we might have to look at that story and I think the other bit that's really important is volunteers there's lots of people out there who could make us the sort of commissioner of services with a management structure but the communities themselves perhaps delivering some of those services not all but certain parts of it where and that you know they're the models that even less there's a change of heart by whatever government's in power I don't want to be critical Nothing in your awesome statement gives us any indication that the local government's only ever going to be able to handle. So that's the context that we're looking at. So, so I do hope that we we talk in, a, in a, an open manner, an imaginative manner, about how we're going to deliver this model because, because it is, it always has been a critical part of the services due to the fact that it is non statutory and the statutory services obviously would come first and we wouldn't argue having have the result we've had in from Ofsted that we wouldn't put more resources in that. We, none of us want to see any of our vulnerable old people then decide. So it really is a, a, a difficult a difficult task, but I think we've got to enter, enter it with a positivity and optimism and see what, see what we do. And I, I want our, our committee chair, through your guidance, to play an active and full part in, a, in, in every aspect of it. I think that's the mindset we should have when we enter.
council around you know, residents inside collecting that information. So I think that's still a discussion we need to have uh, as to what that looks like. Okay, yeah, just a quick one, just going back to what Steve said. Steve, I absolutely agree with everything you just said. We're not going to have evidence, we're going to let us in, and we're not going to have loads of cash going to councils in the future. So we've got to start thinking politically. I'll give you an example. So, um, just in terms of the yeah, in terms of the step program and the focus so far, um, a lot of the work has been about um, what well, has been about getting people to walk and cycle. Um, a lot of it has been building on um, linking to you know public transport nodes or where we've got businesses and things like that. So um, that, that's been that's been a lot of the emphasis. So far, um, so um, yeah. I, mean, I think we just, uh, I mean, we try and make facilities so they're disa you know, disabled friendly uh, when we put them in. I'm not, I'm not sure whether we've, we've specifically picked up on, uh, on on that point you mentioned so far as yet. Can I just come back? Uh, I appreciate that you might have facilities that are disabled friendly.
sure that we share the detail around the step that we've got so far, and then, and then possibly uh, have a, a further discussion, Chair. It's fair enough. What if I understand what you've been saying is that whilst the leisure review and culture review certainly look into what we offer is, we should also look at how we facilitate most people and more access to that offer. Yeah. Um, it, it's simply, we've got to have to look at our partners as well. So, there's a travel philosophy partner, health service partner, and it police. And it's how we sort of make sure that they understand what we're providing as, a, as the hub is actually beneficial to them. And so some of their resources may come on the way. I think you touched on it before, but instead of giving a prescription for antidepressants, why not give someone, a, because, they're, because they're isolated, why not give them a bus pass from Mersey Travel? Or why not give them you know, a pass to a gym? Uh, and you know, it, 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 it's, it's about, it, what this service that we do is worth in its totality, social value of the benefit, and that would be part of the, the balance to say, because it's not a statutory service, it is actually saving us money in lots of the other statutory services. So it's reducing depression, it's reducing illness, it's reducing heart, heart failure, it's all those sorts of things. And that's where this holistic piece of work is going to come. And you know, it, it's called, you know, it's public health prescribing something at the moment, I guess, if you go Best to say you're stuck in your house all day, they will probably give you an antidepressant and maybe not tie into to, to what the, the big offer is. Chris? Um, the, just in answer to what Steve was saying, the GPs will really do that, but um, the people with depression and stuff. Um, the, um, my concern with that is now I'm seven fair people who are in that position, maybe in the park where we need the door knocking on my door. Um, or the door knocking. Okay. The, the interesting thing is, but you also have So the point I'm trying to make is, even if you can arrange to get the buses to take them and reduce fares and the like, we really need to concentrate on eight, find out who these people are, we're all individuals. Secondly, it, it's getting them to leave that country, <coughs> that room and get outside. So even if there's a facility, you give them a bus pass, you give them a, a pass to go. Look, I think there's a lot of evidence that needs to be put on that first step to get them out of the, you know, the first contact steps. Thank you. 